Welcome to the Sangha House and our meditation YouTube channel. The title of the show is Stop Searching for the Meaning of Life. Remember that Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy quote, the meaning of life is 42? Well, it isn't. <laughs> oh, dear. When I was a kid, I loved magic. I absolutely loved it. Not because I like to be mystified by the magic, but actually because I wanted to know how it worked. I used to buy magic sets so that I could figure out how it worked. And when I watched the proper magicians on the TV, I actually found myself more interested in figuring out how they possibly did it than being amazed by the magic. <laughs> um, I also thought I had a very logical scientific mind. And both of these things have proven to be wrong. Because <laughs> what do I discover now? Well, actually, uh, true magic. True magic in life. You know, all these mysteries that we have in our world that we don't understand. And actually, I kind of hope we never will. Uh, these days, in my later years, I'm quite happy to be mystified. Uh, the mysteries of life. So, uh, particularly um, following on from my Buddhist practice, I don't find myself searching for the meaning of life. Um, the Buddha, he searched for the meaning of life for seven years. He went into the forests and he wanted to know the reason for life. He'd seen suffering, old age, death, illness, and he just did not understand what the point was. Uh, so he went off into the forest to essentially search for that meaning of life. Why? Why we live? What's the point? Um, and essentially, after that time in the forest, he found one main factor he wanted to focus on. And that was the alleviation of suffering. It was to this that he did dedicated his life and his concentration. And actually all of his approaches and guidance are centered around essentially this concept of alleviating suffering both in ourselves and in others actually. It was the depth of his compassion that led to this. If you think about compassion, it grows out of empathy, that an amazing ability that us humans have to see and appreciate how somebody else is suffering, to almost feel it, well, to feel it actually. And we have phenomenal um, creative minds. And have you ever been in a situation where somebody says to you, how can you possibly know how I feel? You've never been through this. Well, actually we can, uh, because we have suffered in lots of ways and we are able creatively to imagine what sort of suffering that person is going through. And it's out of this that empathy appears and out of that that compassion appears. Um, so the Buddha didn't seek the meaning of, of life in the end. Instead, he had a burning desire to end suffering. But because of his approach essentially realizing that we don't suffer because of the things that happen to us, but because of our reaction to the things that happen to us. Um, he discovered lots and lots of things about, essentially, the human condition. He's dropped out of his search, but now it's often these things that we focus on. Uh, so you'll read in the popular press that meditation can be used to increase concentration, it can help balance and focus the mind. It can lower blood pressure, so there's physiological changes. But actually, all of these were the byproducts of the Buddhist search. That's not what he was looking for. We somehow managed to skew things around, thinking that practicing a spirituality like Buddhism will help us to bring some kind of meaning into our lives. So we're reaching out, we're searching, we're grasping, desiring an answer in some way, shape or form. The problem with that is that this grasping and desiring nature is one of the fundamental reasons the Buddha found out that we suffer. 
grasping and desire. So we end up turning our search for the meaning of life potentially into another source of suffering. It's not at all what the Buddha was teaching, not at all what Buddhism is about. A central part of the practice really is complete acceptance of the nature of the way life is, just to become content with it and understanding that actually we can't get rid of all the things that challenge us and we can't have all the things we believe will give us pleasure. Instead, we learn contentment with a simplified life and a deep connection with the world and the people around us, developing compassion for them all. So we're going to dig a little more into this contemplation, but first of all, let's do our first meditation, which of course is the body scan. It'll bring us into ourselves, and uh, particularly I want you to focus on Well, essentially the complex, beautiful nature of this experience of of self. So we're going to do our first meditation now. So I recommend you take a nice upright seated posture. Uh, gently upright you don't want tension in the body but that will help to keep your mind on the job essentially and make sure you're not going to be disturbed nice quiet environment wherever you are so gently close the eyes and rest them slightly downcast I'm going to talk you through the body and as I do this you're looking for pure awareness of sensation what can you feel genuinely feel with utter honesty don't let the mind get in the way and fill your experience with expectation or judgment the mind often says I should be feeling more here it even imagines feelings So we have to let all that go and just find a state of pure awareness, what you can feel. We're also going to let go of tension uh, because the more we let go of tension, the more the body becomes still and the more the mind becomes still. Set yourself a nice gentle intent that for this short time you're going to stay with the practice You're going to let go of life's challenges and just become happy to sit here and just be. So we're going to start by taking our awareness down into our feet. Tune in and feel your feet. Inside, in the muscles and the sinews and out on the surface. Just feeling as much as you possibly can. You come out on the surface, on the skin, and you notice tiny little flecks of energy, little sparks. Just tune into those and have a look at their nature. Notice the way they're constantly changing and moving all the time. Nothing static. And we can um, bring our awareness out onto the soles of the feet. Perhaps feel that gentle connection with the earth. 
enjoy that connection. Allow the awareness now to move up through the shins and the calf muscles. You can really let go of tension here. Softening in the body. Because the mind is telling the body to soften, the mind itself softens. Everything becomes still. Work up into the knees and have a look here. See how your knees feel. Complex knees. Take a look. Now work along the thighs and the hamstrings. Letting go and softening. And up into the sitting bones, letting go into the seat. Connect with the earth through the seat. Feel that connection, enjoy it. Just letting go, feeling the pull of the earth. Nice and relaxed. Now become aware of the spine and where it joins the sitting bones and just let the head float up a little and you'll feel the spine easing out and stretching a little. We're not uh, bringing tension into the picture but a gentle purpose in the posture that helps us to stay with the meditation. Let's take a look in the heart space. Home of compassion. Home of our emotions. Check in, see how you're feeling. And you watch out for the mind. When the mind picks up emotion, it wants to understand it and justify it. And thoughts may come. Just try to let those go. We feel our heart in exactly the same way as we felt our foot. Just feel it. Don't even try and explain to yourself how it feels. That's just more thoughts. Just feel it. Then come up into the shoulders. Experience the shoulders. And again here, let go of tension. The awareness travels down the arms and down into the hands and the fingers. Lots of sensation here again. You can pick up that tiny little tingling in the palms. Just 
Just tune into that. Again, notice its nature. Notice how it's it's not permanent. It's constantly shifting and changing. Just feel that. Now we come back up to the head. You can explore the scalp, the surface of the head. Just see what that's like. Now let's soften in the face. Experience your face. Take the tension out. Explore it. You can explore the eyes. Feel their weight perhaps in the sockets. You feel the inside of the face in the cheeks. Letting go of any tension. So we unclench the jaw. It helps to bring the idea of a gentle contented smile into the face. Behind the eyes, perhaps. When we do this, the whole experience softens. Now let's bring all of this experience together. Everything from the toes to the top of the head, feeling it all. The whole body. See its beautiful complexity in your experience. You can pick up that constant change in that in that experience. Nothing static. Just sitting. Awareness, let go of all thought. Nothing else is needed right now. Okay, so we're exploring this idea that we should perhaps give up searching for a meaning of life and actually instead build meaning into our lives. Essentially, that's what the Buddha did. We often think he found the meaning of life, but he didn't. He built compassion into his life and showed us how to do that ourselves. He allowed his compassion for other people's suffering to lead him to a place where he sought out a way to help with that suffering. So he wasn't looking for a meaning, he was looking for a fix. <laughs> How do we find our meaning? It doesn't have to be the same as the Buddha's. Um, probably won't be, it's quite a tall order. 
but we can approach our lives and have a look at it. And actually, the Buddha set out a essentially a path, a mechanism to help us do this, to help us bring meaning into our lives. And it's called the Eightfold Path. Now, the Eightfold Path, obviously, uh, it has eight steps on it. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to look at them all this evening, but we are going to look at the first two, um, which are called Right Intent and Right View. Uh, actually, the path begins and culminates with right view. It can be seen as uh, the real destination of where you want to head to. That's very much what it is about. Um, so everybody's right view will be different because our lives are very, very different and complex. Our minds are very, very different. So we've got to find our own right view, but essentially they will all have something in common, and that is compassionate, skillful, wholesome uh, practice, if you like. There's, um, there's an approach you can use, and uh, you might like to try this over the coming week. You start with meditation, so you settle yourself down, and of course, this, this show goes out every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so perhaps use the show to meditate and then use this particular practice to focus and discover your own personal right for you. So what you do actually is not in meditation but in contemplation afterwards. Just sit quietly and consider something. You have to use your imagination here. Imagine it's your last day on earth you're feeling fine about it you've accepted it but it's your last day and you're looking back on your life what do you want to see what accomplishments do you want to see there what type of person do you want to see when you look back on your life it's a celebration, look on it as a celebration of your life. Don't, <laughs> don't get maudlin with it. Uh, try and approach it with a, a positive frame of mind. But it's a very powerful contemplation exercise. What you'll probably find is you don't focus on big houses and big cars. But uh, deeds you've done and the type of person you've become. As you use this contemplation perhaps for four or five days, keep a notepad with you and just note down the kind of words that pop up. Not whole narrations or stories, just individual phrases and words that appeal to you as you do this contemplation. Once you've spent maybe a week doing this, you look back on those words and see if you can spot any nice simple patterns and out of that, you can try to put together your own little phrase or mantra and use that at the start of each day going forwards. That then forms, um, essentially, it captures your right view, your personal right view for you. I did this many years ago and the realisation came out that my my right view is my life of compassionate service. That's what I do. And my personal mantra that I tend to uh, utter to myself when I first get up in the morning is today I'm going to avoid harm. Avoiding harm, harming others in every way possible, uh, either physically, emotionally, financially, intellectually. It's the one <laughs> it's the one thing I'm always going to fail at because uh, in order to avoid hurting one person, you end up hurting another. So it's very difficult. But that's what I set out with. Uh, that's got to be a good thing. So you've got to discover your own mantra. What, what matters to you, do you think? And that then forms your right view. 
and right intent are all the little decisions you take during the day that take you towards your right view. And this is why you utter the mantra in the morning, because then it sits in the back of your mind in the subconscious, playing in to any time during the day you've got to take a decision, big or small. And you'll find yourself uh, asking, is this heading in the right direction? Um, And in this way, we bring true meaning into our life. And so the desire to find the meaning of life starts to evaporate. It doesn't matter. Um, We've got our direction and we are compassionately heading towards it. So we're going to do our second meditation in just a moment, which is going to focus on the heart and compassion. So again, settling yourself down, getting yourself nice and comfortable. Just relax into the seat. Gently close the eyes. Take that couple of nice deep breaths. And just settle in. Tune in to the space around you, experience it, and experience your body from the toes to the top of the head, exactly what you discovered in the first meditation. Bring it all into play. Let thoughts go. Just sit with pure awareness. Now very gently sitting here you start to notice the body breathing. Try not to interfere with that. Let the body breathe exactly as it wants to, the pace it wants to, the depth it wants to. And just observe it. Sitting observing the body breathing. While you watch your breath, you keep some level of awareness on the whole body and the space around you. But your primary focus is on the breath as the body breathes. You can gently notice the way you can feel the effect, the sensation of breathing right through the body, even in the hands and the fingers, even down to the feet. If you tune in all those tiny little sensations you felt in the first meditation, they're affected by the breath. Feel the whole body breathing. Experience its wonderful complexity. All the things we love in life generally are complex, they're fragile and impermanent. 
So we experience that. Nothing static in what we're experiencing. And we see the complexity in our body. It's fragile nature as we gently breathe. So we open the heart to that experience. Don't let the mind interfere. It may try to insert thoughts about who we are. Just let those go. Just see this wonderful complexity sitting. Now you can think of a good friend, someone you love spending time with. Let's picture their face. As you do this, pay attention to the heart. As you think of your good friend, you may find a gentle warm smile appearing in the heart space. Compassion, friendship. Gently feeling that, enjoying it as you think of your good friend. You can see their face smiling with you. Maybe you hear their voice saying your name. You say theirs. You can replay an episode in your life together, but be careful because you're seeking to be fully present here, feeling the heart, learning about compassion. We don't want to drift off. We see the complexity and the vulnerability in our good friend just the same as we, we've seen it in ourselves. And we offer the opening and the softening of our heart towards our friend because of that. They have challenges in life just the same. So we can return now to the feeling of the connection with the earth through the seat. And we sit with this compassionate moment and we recognize others right across the earth are sharing this compassionate moment through their connection with the earth. Perhaps bring awareness to the people of Taunton they're out there living their lives challenged in just the same way as us. They are complex and vulnerable, fragile. We offer the softening of our heart towards all these people, wishing them well. May they be healthy, happy and free from suffering. We feel that for them. 
connecting with the earth, feeling them connected to the earth too. All these people open and soften the heart. And we can widen our impression, our connection with the earth and understand that every single person on the planet is connected to it right now, whatever time zone they're in, they're in our moment, right here. See if you can get a sense of that, an experience of that. And we soften the heart towards them all. Notice if thoughts arise and let those go. This is an experience thing, it's not a thinking thing. All those millions of people connected to this moment through the earth, shared moment. So by practicing compassion meditation, we develop a habit of softening the heart, not letting the mind and thoughts color our perceptions of other people. This way we connect more deeply. We see how they're challenged in their lives as well. Like ripples in a pond, we make a difference on Mani Padme Hall.